I mean, even Einstein said it's a vibrational universe. I mean, yeah. when there's a vibrational match between you and some experience that exists in the quantum field, get ready because if you're, you're drawing experiences to you and then all of a sudden you have to keep redefining abundance. I mean, my definition of abundance today is very different than it was just uh, just a year ago because so many people think abundance is about money but abundance is having more than you need yeah like uh, having having way more than you need so i have I, my, all my needs are met and then some and then and then when you have that experience then what is your next definition of abundance if you truly believe then that's abundance is there another level but you would never know that until you've had the experience of abundance to that point yeah. so then all of a sudden our definitions begin to change. Same thing with health. Uh, you see all these people, they come in and they think that they just want to get their body healthy. But what they're really doing is getting their mind healthy. <laughs> and they're changing their energy. They're having all these other things going on. And they reach a point where they're so happy with themselves. They're so in love with life. They're in such a state of grace and gratitude that they could care less if they have the disease because they're so happy with them. That's the moment disease goes away because they're no longer the same personality. They're somebody else. The disease exists in the other person because they're thinking differently. They're acting differently. They're feeling differently. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. Change your personality, you change your personal reality. People love to wait for trauma or crisis or disease or diagnosis or loss or something to go wrong in their life where they just reach their lowest point where they say, I got to change and I got to stop thinking this way. What have I been thinking about? How have I been acting? How have I been feeling? And, and the act of observing yourself by observation begins to disentangle you from the program because now you're the consciousness observing the program and you begin to objectify your subjective self. That's lighting a match in a dark place and most people would rather turn on the TV, they'd rather get on their cell phone, they'd rather get on the internet, they would rather something outside of them change how they feel inside of them and, 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 and this work is about regulating it without anything outside of you because when you do that, now you're free. You don't need a person, you don't need a drug, you don't need a thing, you don't need a shopping spree, a football game, you don't need any of those things. You can do it uh, uh, you know, by yourself and that's when we begin to develop this thing called unconditional love because our students, we've measured their neurotransmitters. Oxytocin levels and many of our students go up hundreds of hundreds of times. Oxytocin is the love chemical and oxytocin signals nitric oxide and nitric oxide signals a chemical called derived endothelial relaxing factor, which is a big word for causing your heart to literally swell, causes the arteries in your heart to get more oxygen, more nutrients, more blood. It's not something mystical, it's very physiological. It's like just like when you're sexually aroused and blood flows there, the same thing is happening, but only it's happening in your heart and you feel with a different consciousness so much love. This is where our creative center starts. This is where the beginning of our divinity. This is our this is our connection. This is the union of polarity, the union of opposites. This is this is oneness and where wholeness begins. This is where we should be creating from. So if you can't get energy here and you can't feel a love for your future, that means then on some level you're more addicted to the emotions of the past. So then this is really fundamental because when people start to make those changes, they start getting happy for no reason. And all the things that they thought they wanted, you know, the career, the relationship, all those things, they no longer want them because they feel so whole, they feel like they already have them. And so if your oxytocin levels are up 200 times, you're so in love with life, you feel so amazing that you wouldn't, you wouldn't start judging another person because if you did, you'd lose the feeling. And people start figuring out, I'm just gonna stop judging. Hey, that person that betrayed me 10 years ago, I, I feel so whole, I'm gonna let them go. I'm, I gotta take my attention off them because you feel so great. You don't really care about them any longer and that's forgiveness, but you're not trying to do it. You're not trying to be spiritual. You're not trying to be uh, uh, forgiving. It's the side effect of a shift in consciousness. And when energy makes it to the heart, it goes right to the brain. We've measured that enough times and it resets the person's baseline for fear and anxiety. It's, it begins to change the survival centers in the brain. And the person's no longer so vigilant looking around in their outer world of what's going to change and try to control and predict it. They're more relaxed into the present moment. And of course now things are happening around them. So the work then becomes instrumental, not just because we want people to make those significant changes, 
but we also want them to reap the benefits of their own efforts. And I just talked to someone this morning, just huge, huge manifestation happened to this woman. A lot of money, a lot of wealth, she's crying the whole bit. And she said, I just am, I just, I'm starting to get that I created this. Now, that, that, that means then a layer of the, the, the illusion that we're powerless. You know, we have been so conditioned into powerlessness, into hopelessness, into self-limitation. One of those experiences where you pop above the veil and you start to see that you are that powerful, wow, but not in an egocentric way, not in, hey, look at me, I'm self-aggrandizing. It's more like you're humbled and at the same time you feel amazing. Wow, imagine if the whole world was like that. And so we're piercing this four minute mile. This last year in our work, all the healings, all the amazing experiences, all the mystical moments, all the transformations that are going on in people, piercing through that four minute mile. Once the four minute mile was broken, then everybody said, hey, we can all do it. And within two weeks, everybody started breaking that mile. Well, that's exactly what's happening. We're breaking through this veneer, this level of consciousness that says you are powerful. You could be old and be powerful. You could be young and be powerful. You could be healthy and powerful. You could be sick and be powerful. You could be, you could be anything you want and still do this. And in time, your biology begins to change and so does your life. Yeah, beautiful. Um, let's talk about the heart because I think the heart is such an important part of, of your work as well. How can we live more from our heart? How can we get more in this creation <clears throat> space in our heart? Yeah, the answer is really simple. You practice. <laughs> imagine, imagine, listen, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. We were just talking about this at the week long event in Vancouver just the other day. You got a, you got a thousand people that all come to the event. Their attention is on their boss, their coworker, their ex, their husband, their kids, their everything, everything in their outer world. They're shifting their attention all over the place. And, and you, I'm asking them to take all of their attention off of all of those people, all those things unfold into this field and become pure consciousness and out of anywhere you can place your attention I'm going to ask you to place it on your heart now where you place your attention is where you place your energy so in a sense just like a flower that needs the life force to bloom if you keep feeding your heart your attention and your energy and you learn how to regulate and you learn how to trade fear for joy and you start practicing this in time you'll be able to develop the skill to allow your heart to open more. So most people though, they try it for a second or two and they say, well, it didn't really work. I'm having problems opening my heart. But if I keep pushing the person and we keep giving them more reasons to feel joy and love and freedom, and we start seeing a community starting to do it, like a thousand people, okay? You have maybe 10% the first day that are starting to open their hearts. The moment they start to open their hearts, they're producing that coherent field around their body, and you're sitting next to a person, and your field begins to mingle with their field, and all of a sudden those two fields come together and you build a bigger field. The higher the amplitude, the higher the energy. So in time, you start to see people in a community start to resonate in, in this frequency called love and the heart's like a it's a it's a it's an antenna in a sense it begins to sense that and it begins to open more at the same time they're in an environment where they're safe they're in an environment where there's no threats there's no danger they're retreating from their lives they're disconnecting from the people and things and places learning information and learning how to practice how to use that information like a skill then they begin to notice that they're feeling more joyful they start to notice that they feel more love and and each day there's a progression so so we start every meditation in this work by acknowledging this creative center. Why? Because it requires a clear intention, which is a coherent brain, and an elevated emotion, which is a coherent heart, to begin to produce an effect on reality. So we teach students how to create brain coherence, and boy, we have so much research to show that you can do it. And we teach them how to create heart coherence, which We, we, have, we just did a huge experiment just, uh, uh, just last week in Vancouver. And, and the result of social coherence is an amazing thing because our research also shows that when you open your heart, uh, 
the people that you're connected to within your life will feel those autonomic effects. We can take the 750 people, set them in a room and have the people in the front wearing heart rate monitors and everybody moves into an elevated state and sends the thought on the frequency of love that the people wearing the heart rate monitors, that their bodies be healed, that their lives be enriched, that their dreams come true, that the mystical find them. And at the exact same time, in the exact same day, in the exact same meditation, many of those people, the majority of them go into hard coherence. They're, 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 they're being affected in a very non-local way. So how do you change the world? <laughs> well, you get enough people in hard coherence that not only that they're just meditating for peace, they're not praying for peace. They're the living prayer of peace. They're the example of peace. They're they're walking their talk. They're they're walking the prayer. They are they are a peace. They they've reached that point where they are peace. And when you see people like that, that that are unpredictable, like they're not normal in the way that they, everybody else reacts, they're giving you permission because of mirror neurons to do the same. And all of a sudden, you see it's something else emerging, a new consciousness, like, like a flock of birds all moving at the same time or a group of fish all moving at once. That, that, that living organism gives the appearance of one big organism to predators. And now you have this indivisible kind of group consciousness. That's, that's where we're going in this. We want to, in the living organism called the human being, we heal one another. That's what we do. We take care of one another. We, we exchange information. Um, we teach one another. We shine for one another, not because we want to be better, to show people that they can shine too. That's what the living organism does. So in this age right now, the age of this living organism, selfish individuality will not sustain the living organism. This kind of collective consciousness, this group consciousness, this selflessness is what begins to feed the living organism. And now, just like the school of fish, you have this one mind, one heart, where everybody's at a whole new level of consciousness. And, and if you do that really well, it's going to begin to produce measurable changes in the world. And hopefully that's where we're going.